Is the Ninja 650 the most boring motorcycle of all time? No, that honor goes to the Versus 650, but the Ninja 650 is close. The problem with the Ninja is that it's just too good, but Papa Yams, that doesn't make one lick of sense. If my bike's good, it must inherently also be fun and interesting. Well, unfortunately, no. Good does not equal interesting, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. All dogs are like motorcycles. They just want to go play around and have a good time, but some have a little bit more joie de vivre than others. And while the Ninja 650 might not be the most electrifying motorcycle ever made, it is a damn good bike, and today we're going to find out why. Yep, it's Monday, which means it's another So You Want a Blank Bike video, and today we're looking at that one Ninja you get when you want to feel fast, but you're too much of a good boy to break the rules, the Ninja 650. And now all that philosophical pre Amble aside, the Ninja 650 is, in my opinion, one of the best 650s that you can exchange human currency for, and today I'm going to tell you why in exhaustive detail. Then when the video goes live, I can't wait to hop in the comment section and see all the Kawasaki simps telling me to stop hating on Kawasaki because one slightly negative video from years ago obviously supersedes all current videos and opinions must be locked in a place tighter than Excalibur in the stone. But in case you don't believe me and you want to go and try to prove Papa wrong, well get yourself on Twisted Road and rent a 650 and go make a video about it. That's right, it's on you, you squid. Yes, you, Jeffrey, sitting at home watching this video instead of doing work. I see you. You're supposed to be working from home, jumping on a Zoom call, not just sitting around in your underwear watching YouTube videos. But while you're goofing off, you should click that link below and check out Twisted Road. They're the best peer-to-peer -peer motorcycle rental service in the game, with motorcycles available all over the country. Not only am I an investor in the company, but we use it all the time to get motorcycles for our comparison videos. We've rented a C50, a Tiger 1050, a Harley 48, a Hyper Motard, and we've got a very special video coming out soon with a certain Hyper Naked that Spite and I are very excited to spend a day with. No matter what your riding style is, there's a bike on there for you, so click that link below to get started with a free day of riding. Okay, so the Ninja 650. Not much is known about the origins of this mystical machine. Myth says that it was the result of Kawasaki being cast out by the Kingdom of Rossi for not competing in MotoGP and for only catering commuters. Just kidding. It actually traces its roots back to the old Ninja 500R or the GPZ 500, which was a little brother of the GPZ 900, which was Kawasaki's legendary 80s and 90s rocket ship. The Ninja 500 was first released in 1987 and featured a 498cc liquid-cooled parallel twin that made 50 horse and 31 foot-pounds of torque. As a side note, from now on, we're not going to be doing decimal points and our power figures because there's not a human alive who can tell the difference between 49.9 and 50 horsepower. So you're going to have whole numbers from now on and you're going to like it. It was carbureted like all motorcycles from the dark ages and while it still had full fairings and a sporty look, it was actually pretty comfortable. It had an upright riding position coming from high handlebars and a low seat height and it was fine. It happily carried people to and fro and had reliable Japanese build quality and if you wanted to, you could ride it sportingly. It was fine. But by 2009, it started to look a little long in the tooth, and they officially ended the production to be replaced with the ER6 line of motorcycles. They were available from 2006 onward, but Kawasaki didn't really put a lot of effort in until 2009. This was the first year that Kawasaki made a Ninja 650R that was worth buying. It sports a 649cc parallel twin with a standard firing order, which is a little meh in my opinion, especially in a world where the MT-07 exists, but more on that later. It had a modern looking bodywork, fuel injection, new gauges, lighting, and a punchier tune over the 2006 model. It made 70 horse, and no, not 70.4, remember only whole numbers now on, and 48 foot-pounds of torque, which is a healthy number for a street bike. It featured a fairly basic, non-adjustable 41mm unbranded fork up front and a single preload-only shock in the rear. So it wasn't exactly sporting race bike technology, but given its 31-inch seat height and taller bars, it wasn't designed for tearing up a track either. It was a little on the heavier side at 460 pounds wet, but considering that other standard sport bikes like the VFR 800 are over the 500 pound mark, it's pretty good. One feature we don't often talk about in these videos are radiators and cooling, but this one featured a revised one which made 40 millimeters wider to increase cooling efficiency. Now, that might sound like a tiny change, but when you're riding a fully fared motorcycle around city stopping and starting from the heat, engine builds up and has nowhere to go. Sure, the little fan might kick on to help move more air, but that can only do so much when you're not moving. So increasing the volume on the radiator can do quite a lot to help keep the bike from cooking your shins at a stop. From 2006 to 2017, Kawasaki made the 650R with very few changes, adding ABS, tweaking things here and there, dropping the R in 2012. Kawasaki is very much an if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of company, which explains why the Ninja 250 ran for like 30 years completely unchanged. 
But in 2017, they upgraded the 650 with a surprising number of modern goodies. It got new bodywork to bring it in line with the rest of the Ninjas, and more specifically the ZX line of race bikes. It got a slipper clutch, TFT dash, new suspension, and for an extra 200 bucks, you get the KRT livery, which is absolutely the way to go, especially when your other options are just plain old white. The Ninja 650 hands down one of the most modern motorcycles in the 650 class, and honestly, it's probably the one you should be buying. If you're done with your 300 and you're ready to move on to your second bike, and you absolutely want your sport bike, but you're not really sold on the Super Sport, this is it. The only other option in the 650 class is the CBR 650R, which makes 94 horsepower compared to the Ninja's rather tame 67, but the Ninja is cheaper and a more comfortable daily rider. It also has more tech in it than the CBR 650R, which is a bit nuts, but Honda's got more money than cents and the Accord is still printing money so they can get away with charging a premium for their bikes. However, this video is not just about the Ninja 650, it's also about the Z650, and I know this is going to be like a knife to the heart of all those aspiring fast boys out there, but a naked bike makes way Way more sense for the street than any sport bike does. To prove you, here's a rapid fire little mini list. It's a list within a video. Look at you how lucky you are to get this. Number one, maintenance is easier since there's less plastic on the bike. Number two, they run cooler also since there's less plastic on the bike. Number three, they're cheaper if you drop it since there's less plastic on the bike. Number four, they're cheaper to buy because there's less plastic on the bike. And number five, they're also lighter because there's less plastic on the bike. Are you sensing a pattern here? If you're the kind of person who rides primarily on the street, commuting to work, or just taking the bike on a weekend pleasure cruise, and who maybe wants to try out a track day or two, and generally just have a good time with the motorcycle, there's pretty much no reason why you shouldn't just get a naked bike. The seating position is basically the exact same between the Ninja 650 and the Z650, so you you're just paying a few hundred extra dollars for your own vanity. And yes, Nick, you can consider this official validation that you made the right choice when you bought your Z650. Congratulations, Nick from the Discord. The only issue I have with the Z650 is that it makes a bit of a boring sound thanks to that 180 degree crank. It literally sounds like every other parallel twin out there. Take a quick listen. Kawasaki wouldn't keep slapping it in all kinds of different bikes if it wasn't a good engine. So if you learned one thing from this whole diatribe is that if you buy a fully fared street bike, you're a big dumb dumb, And you're not a big dumb dumb, are you? No, of course not. So you're going to buy a naked bike because you've got a large, huge brain, which means you've got a lot of bikes to choose from in the 650 class. So let's see how the Z650 stacks up against each one. First up is the venerable old MT-07. And this is a tough one. The MT-07 is so much fun to ride and so playful that it makes every other bike in the 650 class feels slow and boring by comparison. However, it can feel a little manic from time to time given that lurchy on-off throttle response, and it's a bit of a dinosaur by comparison, not seeing any updates throughout its entire life cycle ever since 2014. Not to mention the MT-07 is more expensive than the Z650 at $7,599 for the MT and $6,999 for the Z650. However, if it were my money on the table, I'd have to get the MT based on fun factor alone. It has more character and pizzazz than the Z650, even if it's not the most prudent choice. Next is the SV650. Now, we've currently got an SV650X in the shop right now. We're giving it away on yamenu.co. Click that link below to get entered. And on paper, the SV650 has more power, weighs less, and has more attitude coming from its 90-degree V-twin. But honestly, it's just a little bit too old. It's basically the same bike it's always been, even though it has been through a lot of changes in its recent life cycle, where the MT-07 has a more effervescent quality to it. The SV isn't like that. It feels more like a normal motorcycle. Don't get me wrong. It's a great bike, but when you're comparing two quote-unquote normal normal motorcycles, the one with more tech just kind of has to win by default, and basically, they're the same price, so you might as well get the one with all the shiny things. Finally, let's chuck it up against the CB650R, and this one's no contest. Unless you're a huge fan of the CB650R's Neo Retro style, it's not worth the premium Honda puts on it, especially when considered it's just not as sophisticated. The suspension's better, the inline force sounds better, but when you come down to it, those aren't enough to make up for the fact that it's 9399 bucks, and you're getting less of a bike than the Z650 in a lot of ways. Now we could talk about some of the European options, but the only bike that kind of competes with the Z650 is a 690 SMCR, and that's a supermoto. The Duke 790 and 890 compete with the middleweight category, such as this Triumph Street Triple, Ducati 797 is more expensive, and BMW is too busy making the world's most boring super sport to ever worry about the 650 class. So if you decide to pick up a Z650 or the Ninja 650, what issues might you run into? Basically, nothing. 
Yep, it's a modern Japanese naked bike that's not built for performance, so this is the kind of bike that will probably outlive you. It's gonna turn on every single time you wanna go for a ride, and it's not gonna do anything weird. Sure, you might have the odd gear shift, or you might have some ticks or squeaks in the engine, but those are usually not the sign of a fatal problem on the bike, and if they are, there's probably a handful of other red flags you've probably already noticed. Kawasaki makes a very dependable motorcycle, so if you're in the market for a solid, sporty, and fun motorcycle, look no further than the Z650 or the Ninja 650. I might even go as far to say it is the premium mediocre option. Oh, didn't see you there. Why don't you watch this video right over here while you're at it? Because this one's over, actually. There's nothing left to see. But if you click this one right here, you could keep watching your sweet Papa Yam on video. Here, on the internet, on YouTube. Click the video. Do it.